Hello. Right, so today I'm going to talk about diagnostic tests and I'm going to use an example uh, from COVID-19 to talk about how you evaluate uh, a diagnostic test, evidence about a diagnostic test, but perhaps more importantly, how you decide uh, what the test results tell you, what they don't tell you, how useful it is. So um, here we've got um, an infographic from a company that's trying to sell an antibody test for COVID-19. And this was brought to my attention by a colleague who, who was interested in uh, getting a test. Uh, the tests are not available routinely on the NHS. Uh, they cost about £100 to get done as an individual. Uh, and uh, she was interested to know whether or not this was a worthwhile thing to do because knowing the result of her antibody test might give her confidence to move out and about in the community, uh, assuming therefore that she might be immune to COVID-19. And certainly the information that's provided by the company that's made the test suggests that this is a very effective test. It's 100% sensitive and it's 99.8% specific so that's 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 really good isn't it um well let's try to understand what that actually means uh, because these things are widely understood and we also need to consider therefore what the implications of this evidence is for people's decision making so let's imagine that we have 20,000 people that we've evaluated this test on so we've got a population of 20,000 people and we're going to imagine that uh, this is a group of people of whom 19,000 do not have COVID-19 antibodies and a thousand do. So that's a population prevalence of about 5%. Uh, I don't have figures to hand, but that's probably what you'd find in a city like London at the moment that's been quite heavily affected by COVID-19. Um, and we're going to apply a test for their antibodies to this group of people. And the test, of course, has two results. The test is either positive or the test is negative, uh, which opens us to four possible outcomes of a test. Uh, we can test somebody and we find that their test is positive and that test is positive in somebody who does indeed have antibodies. We can test somebody and find that they're negative and that negative test occurs in somebody who doesn't have antibodies. That's what you'd expect and hope to happen all of the time. And in a perfect test, that's exactly what would happen. Um, in this population with a thousand people who have antibodies, 19,000 who don't, you'd get a thousand positive tests and that would be all the people who don't have antibodies, 19,000 negative tests and that would be all the people who do have antibodies. So far, so good. But laying it out like this does highlight that there are also ways that tests could get things wrong. Uh, the negative tests could occur in people who have antibodies. The positive tests could occur in people who don't. So you have possibility of false negative tests and false positive tests. So when we report a figure of sensitivity, uh, that's talking about the rate of true positives in the group of people who have the antibodies or if this is a general diagnostic test people who have whatever diagnosis that you're looking at and 100% sensitive says that everybody who tests positive everybody who has the diagnosis who has the antibody tests positive so it's 100% sensitive the figure for specificity relates to people who don't have the antibody and a specificity of 99.8% says that 99.8% of the time people who um, don't have the antibody will test negative. So in this case, out of a population of 19,000 people who don't have antibodies, 38 would test positive, 18,962 would test negative. So, so far so good. Looks very good. Now the question is, how useful is your test result? And as you can imagine, in the real world, you don't actually know whether you've got 
antibodies or not. What you know is what your test result is. So let's have a look based upon people's test results. And um, test results are either positive, and a positive test occurs in 1,038 people, uh, most of whom have got antibodies. But 38 don't. Uh, so we get a so-called positive predictive value um, of 96.3%. So a positive test gives you 96.3% confidence, certainty, chance that you've got COVID-19 antibodies. A negative test gives you 100% certainty that you don't have COVID-19 antibodies. So everybody, nobody who tests negative has got COVID-19 antibodies. So the negative predictive value, the predictive value of a negative test is 100%. Great. All very impressive. I'd like to have a test, please. Here is my £100. Now, before doshing out your money, I think we need to ask ourselves a few questions. Are you actually sure and what use is this information going to be to you? It looks like a very good test. And to be honest, these are startlingly good figures for any diagnostic test. Things are rarely quite as good as this. So it's very impressive. Now, we're going to take these test findings at face value um, in order to understand the meaning of the results. A very important element of appraising evidence is actually understanding what the results really mean. Um, but we should think about the questions that I'm not asking. Who did this study? Is it peer reviewed? Um, I think this study was done by the manufacturer. I have not looked at the original study in any detail at all. Um, but if it is, it's just possible that the manufacturer is just a teeny bit biased. They want to show how good their test is. Possible source of bias. How in the study behind this did they decide who did have antibodies? Um, if you're going to compare a diagnostic test to uh, the real diagnosis, you actually need to have a criteria for deciding the real diagnosis. You need to have something that's better than the test that you're testing. Um, so you should ask yourself, what's the gold standard to which the test is compared? And is it really the gold standard or is it just another dodgy test? Um, I, I don't know enough about antibody tests to know what the gold standard should be. Um, I think it's one of the challenges of appraising evidence about diagnostic tests that you do need to know what the gold standard should be in order to understand whether the results that you've got are in fact from valid research. And the other big question that you need to ask is how big was the study? Um, it's a question that should be asked of all research, uh, but you need to know how precise these figures are. Um, if, as I have imagined so far, these figures came from a study of 20,000 people, then they're going to be fairly precise. But what if the study had actually only involved 100 people? That estimate of 100% sensitivity and 99.8% specificity um, is looking a little bit more uncertain under those circumstances. Uh, another sample could give you very different figures. So, with that in mind, let's assume that the study is valid and we can rely on these results. What do we know? Well, if I get a negative test, I know that I do not have antibodies to COVID-19. Uh, I know that I'm unlikely to be immune to COVID-19 because I do not have antibodies. Doesn't tell me that I've never had COVID-19 because at the moment we don't know how many people who have had COVID-19 go on to develop antibodies? Um, there's another bit of basic science that is currently lacking in order to interpret that. So a negative test is not really telling you a huge amount. I guess here we're really interested in positive tests um, because a positive test tells you that you might have antibodies. Uh, which therefore tells you that you might have had COVID-19. But it is only might, because as we see, there are false positives. So some people who are testing positive for antibodies don't actually have them. Um, it doesn't tell you that you definitely have antibodies. 
doesn't tell you that you're immune to COVID-19 because even if you have antibodies, you might not be immune. And that's a really important issue here because if the question you're asking is about immunity, the presence of antibodies does not answer that question. So we need to be very careful in appraising any evidence to be very precise about what question is actually being answered. And that has got nothing to do with the quality of the evidence in general. It's about the quality of the evidence to answer your question. Doesn't, of course, tell you that you had COVID-19 for the same reason it doesn't tell you with certainty that you've got antibodies. Now, you might say I'm being I'm, I'm splitting hairs because looking at those figures, 100 percent sensitivity and 99.8 percent specificity. Uh, yeah, you probably have antibodies and you probably have had COVID-19. Now, you'd think that was the case. Absolutely, certainly, definitely under all circumstances, because the test is so very accurate. However, that's not the case. So the study that I described, the hypothetical situation, um, was based upon a population prevalence of 5% for antibodies. Um, and under those circumstances, in that 20,000 people, we've got 1,000 people who, who've, got, um, who've got antibodies. And, and of course, they all test positive. Um, but what if the population had a prevalence of antibodies of 0.5%? Quite plausible. Some countries are less affected than others. Um, some communities are less affected than others. Some populations are less affected than others. Now, under those circumstances, rather than there being a thousand people in the population that, that have antibodies, now there's a hundred. Um, if we look at the sensitivity of 100%, that we get 100 test positives. We've still got sensitivity of 100%. And, of course, we've still got specificity of 99.8%. But that specificity of 99.8% now in a population in which 19,900 people do not have antibodies means that we've got a false positive rate of 140 people. Um, so it's, still, it's still low as a percentage. It's still only 0.2%. But it's now 140 people, which is, of course, more than the number of true positives which says that a positive test result no longer says you've definitely got or you're almost certain to have COVID-19 antibodies because in that population, most of the people who test positive actually don't have COVID-19 antibodies. So the positive predictive value of a positive test is only 41%. Only 41% of te positive tests in this low population, low prevalence population, actually have antibodies. Now, that should give you a note of caution about interpreting diagnostic tests in general. It's really important to understand the population in which they're going to be used in order to understand that, how they perform. And sensitivity and specificity do not vary across populations, whereas positive and negative predictive values do. So let's come back to the question about spending £100 on an antibody test. Um, the test is going to be useful for population screening as part of a study that would help us understand how far this virus is spread. That slight level of inaccuracy is not going to cause any problem at all, really. It can easily be corrected, allowed for. But for individuals, it's not so useful. And, and the reason it's not useful is, is, is for two real reasons, one of which is if you suspect you've had COVID-19, you, you come from a population which, in which many people will have had COVID-19. So then you come from a high prevalence population. And if you're in a high prevalence population, you've probably got antibodies and you'll take the test spending your £100. And it will probably tell you that you've got antibodies. Um, if you're in a low prevalence population, though, and you may not know whether or not you're in a low prevalence population, uh, you will take the test and if it comes back positive, you may have antibodies, but equally you may not. If it's a low enough prevalence in the population, you may be more likely not to have antibodies 
than to have antibodies despite the positive test. But perhaps most importantly, irrespective of all this evidence, even if you have antibodies, you don't know if you are immune. So how could that possibly help you to change your behaviour? Uh, it doesn't tell you you're safe to go out. It doesn't tell you that you can reduce um, reduce your precautions. It doesn't tell you that you're not going to be prone to be infected again. Um, we simply don't know that with the current scientific evidence. So there, a quick lesson in appraising evidence from diagnostic tests uh, using the example of COVID-19 antibodies. A um, little bit of additional reading if you want to follow up and to get all the formulas for the various uh, statistics that I've quoted. Uh, thanks very much for listening. I hope you learned something. Goodbye.